And then, um, so we've got, uh, Holly's got a video for us. Sarah's got a video. Kevin's got a video. Um, any, anyone else have a video for us today? The fire. Oh, place the <laughs> okay, well, um, we're going to, uh, Holly has a uh, limited time today. So um, we're in another couple minutes, then we're going to have her um, kick us off with uh, some video. If that sounds okay. Yeah, thanks for that. I've got, I got double booked because I'm leaving and my newcomers group is having their Bye Holly, see you next fall party. <laughs> so, so, um, but the video I have, uh, Patty Ferguson and I put together and we put it together uh, for Travelogue. It's a um, Machu Picchu video. And as you know, Patty's from Peru. So she got to spend quite a bit of time there um, years ago, I think 2013, she was there and actually climbed the peak, did some, some um, mountain climbing. And then I was there in 2015. And uh, on the way down from Machu Picchu, I got to um, ride next to the bus driver in the front of the bus. And although um, it's some through the screen video, it was a lot of fun. So that's, that's uh, what this video is all about. So I'll do share screen and sound and optimize and see if I can find that, um, that to start. Let me see, desktop should be there. Oh, here we go. I believe you can see that now, share, share. Hi, Patty Ferguson. Here we are going to Machu Picchu. When did you go? Hi, Holly. I was there in November of 2013. When were you there? I was there in October of 2015. But we both took the train and saw the approach to Machu Picchu. Yes, and the train, we uh, yeah, got on the train from Cusco to Machu Picchu. Beautiful ride. Yes, we could see the agricultural fields. We could see the train station. What are these guys doing? You know what is fun is those are the young people walking the Inca Trail anywhere from three to five days as opposed to taking the train. We got snacks on the train, including that yellow Inca, Inca Cola, and we could see corn being grown outside, often on terraces. Machu Picchu, a 15th century Inca citadel. It is 50 miles northwest of Cusco. Most archaeologists believe it was constructed as an estate for the Inca emperor Pachacutec. Built around 1450, it was abandoned a century later at the time of the Spanish conquest. It remained unknown until 1911 when it was discovered by an American, Hiram Bingham, uh, a historian from a historian from Yale. From the train station, we took a short walk to the bus, where we took a fun ride up to the ancient city. The Machu Picchu official map, available online, shows many of the sites that we were able to see in person as we toured. At the entrance of Machu Picchu, you see the mountain range Huayna Picchu. In the 70s, I was able to climb the top of that mountain. It gives you a spectacular view of Machu Picchu. Take a tour with us as we walk through Machu Picchu. Emperor Pachacutec's summer estate. Here's the House of the Guardian.
The Incas were naturalists and worshipped many gods, including the sun, the moon, water, condor, and Mother Earth, Pachamama. Here is Pachamama's temple. Here is the Temple of the Three Windows and the Inca's Sacred Plaza. The Temple of the Condor is the last temple we saw. The Incas were known for their stonework. The Incas conquered many tribes and used the conquered as slave labor. The rocks had to be moved from the river up the mountain. Boy, it doesn't pay to lose a war. Now we're on the road to the Inca Bridge. The path from Machu Picchu to the jungle was safeguarded by this plank on the bridge. After our tours, we board the bus for a harrowing ride down the mountain to Aguas Calientes. We have to avoid other buses, and we have to avoid pedestrians. Now we're back in Aguas Calientes, where we get back onto the train for the ride back to Cusco. Sagra, a devil dancer from the Andes in Peru, came to entertain us as night fell on the train, concluding our journey. That was fun. Oh, good. Brought, brought back memories. Yes, it did. <laughs> we had uh, scheduled to go to Machu Picchu and uh, it got canceled because of uh, COVID. So we haven't gotten to do that yet. So it was really fun to, um, to see it, to, and to see, see what you guys got to see through yeah, your eyes. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's one of those once in a lifetime things, at least for me it was. Ron had been there once before, and Patty, as you heard, had been there once before. But um, like a lot of places we all go, it's you go once and you can't go back. And um, I guess professional filmmakers could do something a little different with their ride down the mountain or the night scene on the train. But it, they were things I wanted to include in this video that, um, so I guess technically you could say, oh, you should have used a, um, one of those uh, cameras on, you know, mounted on your helmet or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it, it worked pretty well. You did, I thought you did a really nice job with that, Holly. The one thing I really liked was the, how you had the narration going back and forth between the two of you. Yeah, yeah. I oh, thought that was very effective. 
Thank you. Yeah, we um, we put together our photos and videos first because, as I said, some were Patty's, some were mine, and then then kind of talked it as we recorded the narration. So thanks. Yeah, it just it to me it's it's just kind of a it it um, I don't know what the right word is. I want you know it's kind of like if you have one person doing the narration, you pay attention a certain way, but then when you've got two people. It's it just to me it's refreshing because it's like oh here's another voice and so I really like that aspect of it I thought that was great. Okay, thanks. We'll keep doing that. <laughs> We've got a couple more to do. We haven't done we did Chincheros and the Highlands, but we haven't done Cusco itself or, or Lima. That's on the docket for next year. So we'll keep keep up that method. <laughs> nice. Thanks. I liked your choice of music. Oh yeah, El Condor. That's um, pretty classic Peruvian. And I, I think it'll be fine on YouTube because it's Peruvian. You know, I, have a question they allow about, that. I have a question about your voice over the back and forth. Was that scripted? Were you reading off of scripts? No. Well, uh, no, not, none of it was actually. Patty had read the kind of historical part ahead of time and had that in her head. And the rest we just did in pieces as we did it. Okay. Do you, you think scripted would have been better? No, it, it, it sounded a little scripted. So that's why I wanted to know. Oh, no. no. I thought the photos, Holly, uh, gave, gave your audience a real nice overview of what you would see when you were up there. So very. Very nice. Good. Thanks. Yeah, we'll I'm give just, that. We'll give that to Paul McCreary at, for um, travelogue, and I hope the rest of you consider too some of your um, videos that lend themselves to travel to uh, do that because Paul's always looking for fodder, and Chuck Hill too with Showtime if it's not a travel thing but short. I have a question. Um, Holly, did uh, were some of the pictures like some of them had really nice, easy transitions, and I loved when you had the the pictures coming like this way and this way. The few of them that you did, some of them were um, just really cut, like like almost like a just a slideshow, just on and then off without any kind of transition. Was that intentional? Yes. Yeah. The beginning parts primarily were um, cross dissolve and calm yeah. and then I um, chose other transitions for the bus trip down the hill to give the effect because I had a lot of stills in with the video I didn't have a straight yeah. video going down the the mountainside so that's why I used those other tra transitions I just I found those a little jarring but yes, good. that's just uh, good, that's what you wanted. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> it, the bus ride was unbelievable. It was uh, nobody else wanted to sit up there next to the driver. <laughs> <laughs> Did you stay overnight one night? No, no. We were on a tour with Vantage. It was um, a two week tour of in Peru. The first week was the on the Amazon, which probably many of you have seen. I did two travelogues, each one about 20 minutes of our tour of the Amazon and the um, villages and stuff that we visited. And then the second week was in um, primarily in the highlands, including Machu Picchu and Cusco. In between there was a few days here and there in Lima. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Does, any other questions or comments? Um, how about if we go to Sarah next? Sarah, are you ready to okay. show us? Uh huh. I think so. All right. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Oh, oh, right. Um, well, mine is a lot closer to home than Holly's. Uh, this is a show about Bisbee, Arizona. Uh, Carl and I went over there a couple weeks ago and stayed overnight. As I may have told some of you, uh, we debated on where to stay. We wanted to be within walking distance of a lot of the 
places of interest. Of course, Bisbee isn't that big. But um, after reading the descriptions on some of the hotel offerings right down in the heart of the downtown, where they said that they include earplugs with their nightly rate, we decided that probably we don't want to stay right downtown. So we did stay a little more out in the uh, Tombstone Canyon neighborhood to the west a little bit. And uh, we discovered that Bisbee is quite the party town and uh, we were glad that we stayed where we did. It was an Airbnb and uh, it'll, you'll see a couple pictures of that in this show. Um, my main purpose in doing this show was to incorporate a little more percentage wise of video clips than I usually do is to get some experience with working with those. I, <clears throat> I did get experience in trimming several of them. And so that was um, a learning step for me and I enjoyed doing that um, just to <clears throat> make it a little more concise. Um, I would like uh, your, in, your uh, feedback though on how I might improve either the filming of the video clips or the using them uh, and applying them to a show. So keep that in mind as you're watching, if you would. Uh-oh. <laughs> no. Let's see. Oh dear. Why don't you click click on stop share and then start over? Okay. Because you're in Zoom. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll start again. Can you see it? No, we see you. Can you see it now? No. 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 We hear, okay, we hear it. You hear it? Okay. Um, there's a button after I've clicked optimize and share sound. There's a button to the lower right that says share. But when I clicked on that the last time, seemed like I was getting clear out of Zoom. Um, there should be, when you ask it to share, Sarah, there should be a box that pops up and then it lets you select your player, your video player. Okay. Share. There we go. Is that good? Yeah. Can you see it? No, it's a it's a black or a gray screen with lines in it. Okay. Oh dear. I don't usually have this trouble. All right, I'm going to start again. Um, stop share. I have it queued up, so that's not the problem. Share screen, I've got optimize and share sound. Share. There we go, it's Good. working. It's okay, all right. Yeah. In the 1870s, copper, lead, silver, and gold, as well as other semi-precious gems, were discovered in the Mule Mountains of southern Arizona. By 1910, with the mining industry booming, Bisbee had become the largest city in the Arizona Territory. 
with a population of more than 25,000. But 45 years later, the ore reserves ran out, and in 1975, Phelps Dodge shut down all open pit and underground operations. When the Bisbee real estate market collapsed, retirees and hippies moved into the affordable housing. Then speculators began purchasing properties and renovating the city. Today, Bisbee is a well-known artist community where architecture and heritage have been preserved for the enjoyment of tourists and locals alike. The city's population is now about the same as its number of feet above sea level, just over 5,000. In April, Carl and I had a one-night getaway in Bisbee. A renovated miner's shack called Little Green House was our Airbnb temporary home. This one-room, squeaky-clean house on the hill served as our base of operation while we explored Bisbee.
We've got some notes if you're interested. <laughs> okay, let me get out of here once. <laughs> it's at the top of the screen. Yeah, stop Claire share. at the top of the screen. Stop share. There it is. Hello. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Okay, I've got my pen ready. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, let's start off with great job. Oh, thank you. Now, here's why we liked it. Um, we like the, the interspersed use of video. That was excellent. You need to slow down some of your pans, your, your panning shots where it goes across. You need to okay. slow those down just a little bit. Uh, liked, very much liked the use of chapters to break up the subject matter. I thought that was well done. Uh, there were some music changes along with that that we thought were very appropriate. Um, really liked that video shot where you're walking through the arches. Mm -hmm. that, that one just looked twice at that. Um, I think you missed some opportunities for more narrations. There, there was a lot of opportunity there. Um, something else that we really liked is the way you caught the local flavor by use of the local people. Mm -hmm. those, those were very good, I liked that a lot. And we just liked your overall photography. So uh, can't find a whole bunch wrong with it if um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought afterwards they they had a lot of those very long murals and maybe um, if there weren't cars parked in front of parts of it, it might have been effective to pan those to see the whole wall, for instance. If you're going to do something like that, then you need to have a very stable platform as you pan across because yeah. uh, carrying the camera, unless you've got a really good uh, uh, stabilizing system, you're going to get this as you're going. So uh, that golf cart would have worked just great. That would have given you a level thing. Anyway, yeah. somebody else's turn. Have at her. Great job, Sarah. I really um, gave a nice overview of Bisbee and uh, the uniqueness of the, of the town. Um, there were a couple, I think a couple of your videos that were vertical rather than horizontal. And um, that would be just a suggestion to, to uh, try to take videos uh, horizontal, but, but I just, that was, that was great. Really enjoyed it. Nice Thank job. You. Thank you. What is, um, what is the advantage of the horizontal video? Is, is, it, is it just the way it was intended to be done with a, a, with a phone? Well, you know, a uh, quick goodie, Sarah. We watch TV like this. We don't watch TV like this. That's so for your, for your still photography, mm -hmm. it's great that you're vertical. But when you're shooting your video, I would agree with Barb and then with Brian and Susan too. Uh -huh. Just keep it horizontal. Okay. And then you get a better feel for what's going on. But all in all, I think you did a great job with it. And the comments from uh, the other three three, I think we're spot on. So great job. Thank you. Well, it would fill the screen better on horizontal, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It just, you know, like I said, you, you know, you're doing this and when you're shooting that, that video and it's, it's vertical like that, mm -hmm. there's all this black on either side of the screen, which is kind mm -hmm. of wasted. So wasted. by filling the screen, yeah, you're, you're, right. you're much better. Right. I get it. Other than that, though, great I, job. Yeah. Thank it was you. so fun. I want to go to, I want to go, I want to, I want to try and climb those steps. <laughs> <laughs> well, go in October and you can be in the race. <laughs> oh, I, well, I don't think I want to do a race, <laughs> but um, some, of, I had a difficulty hearing some of the, um, of the narration because the background music was a little loud for me. I don't know if that was, uh, it was great, great music choices, but that was okay. the only thing that I was aware of. And then okay. what they said too about the vertical mm -hmm. uh, stuff versus horizontal, but. Right, um, okay. Yeah, we didn't go in and out of Airbnb any more times than we had to <laughs> because of 
25 steps and then an incline after that to get into it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. There was one thing that I did not capture on film and um, it's probably a very good thing. We were sitting uh, eating dinner on the uh, outdoor seating area of the table on su that Sunday night. And I heard some commotion on the street kind of to my back. So I turned around and looked and there was a big SUV coming down uh, Main Street towards us and it had a sunroof in the top of it. And up through the, the sunroof popped a young girl and she was smiling and all of a sudden she, she raised her t-shirt clear up over her head and had nothing on under it. <laughs> <laughs> I, my my phone had had lost all of its charge so i didn't have it with me so i didn't get that one <laughs> good thing huh <laughs> wow <laughs> but it's a story to tell yeah it was a fun awesome. place <laughs> you never knew what was oh going to happen gosh. next in bisbee <laughs> so i'm i'm uh do an experiment and I'm trying to see if I can get the best Zoom video viewing that I can. So I have gone straight to Ethernet from my Comcast, straight into my computer, turned off Wi-Fi, and basically things are, I think, better. But the panning was a little jerky and I don't know if that was just me or Zoom, um, maybe just Zoom. Anybody else experience that? Just on the panel. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree with you, Grace. It it was a little jerky, and so, like you said, I I think it's more of a Zoom thing than it is a Sarah thing. Yeah, yeah. We agree with that. Uh, we've been using an Ethernet connection from the beginning, and uh, we still get the little bit of jerk on okay. it. Okay. So Sarah, your description of the girl popping up uh, through the, the roof right there, I take it you've never been to a Jimmy Buffett concert. <laughs> that, that is correct. <laughs> that would be kind of common there. Oh, okay. I live a very sheltered life. <laughs> well, thanks for your input, folks. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was really fun. That was fun. Thank you. Um, next, we have Kevin's got a video for us. All right. Uh, I was, you bet. I was over in Tombstone last weekend shooting. They had the Shefflin Days event, which they had last fall. And so the, the April is going to be the normal time of year that this event will occur going forward. But because of the COVID, they had to push it back last year to uh, October. So anyway, what I tried to do in this video was make it a little different so it wasn't the same type of video that I did before. I made it a little longer than I normally would. It's about four minutes and 15 seconds. The one thing, and I was talking with Barb about this, the music selection, when you start getting over, I'm usually like at a two minute, three minute max on my videos. And there's a lot of options for music. Well, you start getting over four minutes, and if you're just going to have one song, your options get slimmed down greatly. So I found something that's, it's okay, the music's okay, but it's not great. At least I, I, I wanted something that was just a little different. But anyway, uh, so this is the video I put together. I think... Oh, it's wanting me to do something. I've got the new computer. Hang on. Uh-oh. One second here. I'm having to do a bunch of stuff. One second. Since this is the first time I'm doing this. Oh, it's going to make me quit. Oh, no. Um, well, I don't want to do that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I might have to quit and then re-come into the meeting. Uh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Get amongst yourselves if I do that. Okay. <laughs> I'll be back in a minute. Oh. 
Well, I can tell you that on Zoom, unexpected things happen. <laughs> and uh, I was running a convention this last weekend with 75 people. I think I was mentioning that earlier. Uh, we had a polling system set up for voting on things. And then when we went time, I was checking it out ahead of time, fortunately, and the polling feature wouldn't work. So we had to monitor and adjust as we teachers call it and uh, use a different system to vote. But that was the only thing that went wrong. So that was good. Welcome back, Kevin. <laughs> well, let's try this one more time. I don't know if this is going to work. I might have to go to the other computer. Hang on one second. Oh, this is going to work, I think. Okay, here we go. I was getting a weird thing where it wasn't wanting to show the box. Okay, here's the slideshow, the video.
There we go. That footage of those kids pulling the donkeys. <laughs> the donkey I was laughing. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> they were so cute. My shoulders were totally aching watching them do that pounding in the rock. <laughs> yeah, that, that is amazing to see them. They, do, they go for 10 minutes and they're, they're doing that into solid granite. The guy that won drilled down seven inches, which is insane, absolutely insane. And you just, uh, you'll see them, some of the guys would, you know, they pound for a minute and then they almost have to stop for a second and catch their breath almost. And then they'd go back at it again. But the guy that won was just like a jackhammer and he just was consistent and he kept going. So I was completely blown away by that. I like the level that you had your videos for, for several of the different sections um, with the pie eating. You must have been right down low to, to get that uh, video like that. And how did you have permission to be so close to those contestants? I mean, you were right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just... <laughs> There, there, there is an adage that I have when it comes to stuff. If you act like you belong, then people assume you belong. Okay. So really, uh, if as a quick goodie, if I wasn't doing this for the city of Tombstone, I would not be shooting kids and doing all that other stuff because there's just too much anymore. People get too wigged out about it. Uh, so if you've got a, a professional looking camera, you act like you belong, People, no one questioned it at all in terms of what I was doing and why. And basically, really for the pie eating, uh, you got to get in there at that same level because otherwise you're looking down at the person and you're just never going to see what they're doing. So really, you come right in at their level and that helps a lot. Yeah, that was great. And and even the, the, the kids riding their noodle horses and stuff, you were lower than you typically would be if, if you were just standing along the sideline taking a video. So a very effective use of, of um, that, I thought, uh, and hilarious. Some of, the, some of the mules when they were stopping at that one point and they're trying to get them over that, the finish line, I guess. Yes. That, and yeah. that and just just a fun video thanks barb yeah that that one thing that was that was the uh, timing and scoring for the for the races for the donkey races and so most of them went over without an issue but some did for whatever reason did not like that and they'd hit the brakes and th they can't finish until they get the nose of the donkey across the scoring line so <laughs> some of them were there for a half a minute or a minute they'd yeah. circle the donkey around mm -hmm. to try to get him to come again they'd get closer to him one woman was giving him some hugs and then she <laughs> finally got him to come across so but i'm uh, glad you captured that and showed that in the video because i thought that right. entertaining to your audience um, yeah i'm, I'm gonna guess that that's the cattle guard effect because some of those may have been on ranges and so forth with roads and cattle guards and they get yep. trained those, those you eventually don't even have to put a cattle guard you just put the strips on the road and they won't cross it <laughs> i think you're i think you're right grace yeah it was uh it was interesting because the first year i didn't really see that and then this year there were and it really was more of the people who were doing it for fun, so to speak, versus the professionals that were there, those, those donkeys really had no issues at all with it. And I think they're very used to it. But the ones that were uh, not the professionals, those donkeys, some of them just, they put the brakes on and it was pretty uh, fun to watch. I like the point when you, when, when you were following along with the donkeys, but behind, and then you it was slung from from one side to the other. But you must have done just between the donkeys, and they um, that was kind of fun. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. It was just it, instead of just being a thing where you're coming up behind them from one angle. For some of them, I would be on one side and then kind of come around, come around yeah. to the other side. 
And so that just, again, makes it a little bit more interesting. And like I said, I tried to make it different than what I did last year. So uh, I, I also like the mucky um, because uh, with the kids sp specifically, yes. because they were not getting it in the bucket <laughs> in, <laughs> in various ways. <laughs> and it was fun. It was fun. Oh, uh, well, and the other thing in some of the adults that were doing it into the ore cart, Mm -hmm. uh, there was one young man, and I swear to God, about half of his shovel load each time was going over the backside of the thing. <laughs> and I thought, man, you're missing out on this. But he has no idea. He can't see it. So uh -huh. but the kids, that was something new that they did this year. And I really liked that. I thought that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. You must not have used your drone this year. In, in no drone this year. Yeah. 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 Just again, to mix it up and not keep it have it be the same video. So, and and the other goodie is, I don't know that we'll shoot it again next year, just because it's kind of like, okay, we've given them a nice library of footage from both years. Now we may do some other event for them, but at least this, for this event, I think we maybe are good for a few years and then go do it again at some point. And What's your camera stabilizer for the uh, I've got a, uh, Oh, it's a little Canon like 405 XF. So it's got image stabilization in it. It's just a little handheld job. And I can, it's got a handle so I can hang on to the handle. That's where Barb was talking about. Like when I was uh, doing the donkeys, you know, the, the mini donkeys and stuff like that. And I'm able to hold that camera lower to the ground and then just run with them versus having to have it up on my shoulder or up higher. And it does a pretty good job, I think, with stabilization. Oh yeah, it's, it looks nice. Thank you. You need, you need to show us, you're sitting at home, you need to show us some of this equipment. I, I, yeah. I, I think it would be really fun to, to see what you uh, do. Sure. Because uh, like, well, you're out in the bright and you've got a, a viewfinder that's, you know, how do you keep, being able to see it when the, or do you just aim? You know, it's, it's, well, there's a, and I'll, and I'll, you know what, next week I'll, I'll show the camera and there's a little uh, external lens or a viewing hood that I can put on it, which does help to some degree. But for the most part, like, especially when I'm, I was running with the kids, like the noodle races and stuff, you can't be looking at the camera and running at the same time. So basically you kind of get it just started. You get a quick glance. Hey, if I'm in the ballpark and I'm staying X number of feet away from him, then great. And then you just kind of point in direction and go. Now, trust me, all of it did not look good that I shot. So <laughs> at some yeah. point, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, you just are pulling out the best stuff. But right. yeah, if, if you said, I want to, I want you to show me everything that you shot, you would go, God, this guy is horrible. <laughs> yeah. I and I agree music. with the music. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. music, I think the music was okay. It just, uh, I mean, at the beginning, it was really nice because it kind of had a little bit of a, that acoustic guitar thing at the end, it got kind of, I don't know, organy or something. And it just, I, it didn't work, so. Um, when you're trying to find some music that's, there's not as many options in the world of country music or Western music, even in that service that I use. So at some point, you kind of, it's like, okay, I've picked the best of what I think will work. That's why I always like to do my slideshows two to three minutes max, because I have lots of options then. And I don't like to necessarily loop music. So, you know, play it again or come in with a second song. I'd rather just have it be one song. But that's a personal preference on my part. That was fun. Well, thank you. I wanted to ask about the slow motion. I really appreciated it being, some of it was in slow motion because some of those things were happening fairly quickly in real time and you could actually see it uh, when you slowed it down. Now, did you shoot that at the slow motion setting on your camera or did you slow it down in production? No, oh, thanks, Sarah. And, and I would agree with you completely about some things look really good in slow motion because you get to see what's going on better. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I was shooting the camera in a slow motion mode. You can slow down video that you shot normal at a normal speed, and you can maybe go down to mm, 60% of the normal speed, 50% maybe max. But to go any slower than that, it, it gets real jerky and it doesn't look good. So, you know, nowadays with, with like with the iPhones and stuff like that, you can use your slow-mo on your iPhone mm -hmm. or, and your Android. And it's amazing the, the quality that you get from it. So, uh, you know, the good thing is you can, you can just try it for some stuff. From doing it last year, Sarah, I found that the slow motion really did work well. And so this year, I wanted to mix that up, use a lot of slow motion, but also get some where there was, like where the, the guy was doing the rock drilling. And so for each of the guys, I would shoot some slow motion and then I would shoot some normal speed just so I had the option. Uh, the other thing that happens when you shoot in slow motion, there is no sound that's recorded. So, uh, to have any sort of ambient sound going on, you have to shoot at normal speed. So that, that's the only disadvantage of that. But to me, it's not a huge disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Using a DSLR and you want to shoot, uh, or you want to incorporate slow motion, we'd recommend uh, shooting at 60 frames a second. Definitely. Anything, anything, uh, anything higher than that is wonderful. Uh, the, I think the, my camera shoots at 120 in slow mo, slow motion, and I think the iPhones are even better than that, like 240 or something. I'm looking. <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's an amazing. You you get so much bang for the buck with the iPhone and the slow mo on it. I I've been amazed with that. Uh, it'll go as high as 240. Yeah, there you go. That's, but with the 1080p, it, at uh, it's uh, 120. Sure. And no. that other one is that high efficiency stuff that Apple does, which I pr probably wouldn't go there. <laughs> yeah. 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 120 <laughs> frames is really nice. So they wouldn't let those of us that use our iPhone as our camera to video close up like you did. <laughs> <laughs> don't look that professional with standing there with an <laughs> iPhone. So I'll put it on a gimbal. You'll look more professional. <laughs> I would I would agree with Grace. Yeah, you just you act go. like act like you belong. It's amazing. <laughs> People will not question if you act like you know what you're <laughs> doing. They just usually maybe people are more interested in what you're doing, but people are not questioning what you're doing or why you're doing it. So anyway, <laughs> I just love that little girl who just had her eyes on you while she was running for that period of time she was yeah. watching you film her you know <laughs> yeah i think i think she was more interested in the old man running next to her than the actual <laughs> racing of with the noodles yes <laughs> so there you oh go gosh. that was great <laughs> thank you so much hey you bet um, as we wrap things up, um, a while back, uh, there was an interest in gathering information on like who's using PCs, who's using um, Apple products, what we're using for audio, for different things. And I got uh, several, several responses and I've been compiling a spreadsheet. Um, and uh, the things that I'm the, I've got down is what kind of camera you're using, computer, what you use for photo editing, for video editing, your audio, graphics, anything else that you want to share. And so um, anyway, if any of you want to uh, email that, I'm, and I'll just keep kind of compiling it in here. And then I was going to send it to, uh, um, to Brian. And I think you, had, you were going to do something with it. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> It was a while ago, but anyway, whatever we wanted to do with it, I don't know. <laughs> uh, there's a page in the Multimedia SIG website that talks about the various hardware and software configurations that people are using. That gives people that are just getting interested in this an idea where they should maybe look for a good product there's, it's really a bad, bad, bad idea for someone new to the, to the field 
to buy a software product that nobody else in the SIG is using and then show up at a SIG meeting and say, help, <laughs> it's, it's not gonna work. <laughs> so that, that's the idea behind the chart. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Any other final comments or suggestions or anything? I have no, got one thing. Um, a few weeks ago when we did the Audacity um, yeah. uh, class, uh, made a comment something along the lines of it didn't matter if you recorded in stereo or mono or whatever. Uh, actually, it does matter. So I'd like to issue a correction. Record in mono. And when you export in stereo, it will make the sound sound like it's coming from the middle between the speakers. If you record in stereo because you're using a mono mic, it's going to put it on the right of the left channel. So when you export your, your final file, it's going to put that voice over on the side instead of in the middle. So record in mono, export in stereo. That's it. Thank you. Awesome. I got, I got one other quickie for you. And this yeah. is something Gary and I have been chatting about. He has worked some magic with Keynote and possibly also with PowerPoint on some of those masks that I shared for video a week ago. And he's he has said that he'd be happy to kind of give everybody a demo, not obviously today, but maybe in the next coming weeks or so. Gary can do that and show everybody this workaround that he's come up with, because I think uh, it will it will definitely help those incorporate those masks into their video. So that would be wonderful. Gary's already left us, huh? Okay. No, oh, no, there you are. There you are. Gary, do you have an idea on, uh, on when you might uh, like to do that? Well, it'll probably be a couple weeks. Uh, I have family coming from out of town that's going to be here at least a week, uh, six to eight days. So, you know, let's look at least a couple weeks out. And once I, I have a firm calendar, I'll, I'll let everybody know. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, all Gary. All right. Thank you all. And we look forward to seeing you all next week. Um, unless there's any final words, I'm going to go ahead and click end. OK, Bye, thank everybody. you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.